Hello, my name is Kelly, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the Estes Proto X, which is this little guy right here. It is a pretty tiny little quadcopter. I've been into flying these for a little over a year now, and I have to say this is the smallest one I've seen. Um, I wouldn't call it a beginner quadcopter, but it's definitely advanced beginner, and it's great for flying indoors and kind of honing your skills. So a couple things I want to talk to you about. Um, I have this one here that I've been playing with, and then I have a brand new one here in the box. And I let, I'm going to just leave it in the box. No need to unbox it, but I'll tell you everything that comes with it. It comes with the charging cable. It comes with the copter. It comes with the remote. It comes with um, instructions. And it also comes with four spare props. The props tend to pop off this thing quite a bit. Um, anytime you have a crash landing or you hit a wall or something, uh, the props come off. And so definitely hold on to those spare props. They're easy enough to pop on and off, and I have yet to use any of my spares. I've been able to find them every time, but your biggest danger is you're going to lose them, and you'll basically be a prop short. So I would be sure to hold on to the props. Um, first thing I was going to talk about, again, is just the size. I mean, there I am holding it. It is probably less than three inches for sure, a square, and less than two inches tall. It's fairly heavy. It feels very, fairly dense, and it's actually made from a circuit board um, with the engines built into it. It has a built-in battery that is not rechargeable, has an on-off switch, and it has uh, cool LEDs that I'll show you when we fly it in a minute. Um, it's got a six-axis gyro. It's very stable, surprisingly stable for the size. Um, you can even kill the throttle, let it fall, and then turn it back on, and it, it will recover really nicely. So I'm really impressed with the stability of it. Um, because of the size of the remote, it's kind of tricky to fly at first. You have to get used to this size remote, but once you get used to it, it's pretty m maneuverable, and um, if there's no wind, it's very easy to be precise with it. You don't want to fly it in wind. It really doesn't react well at all. I took it outside one time, and just pretty much it was. I had to drop it because it was going to go over the fence. Um, going to talk a little bit about the remote. It is pretty small as well, as you can see, compared to my hand, and you kind of feel like a giant when you're playing with this thing. It uh, takes three AAA batteries. You have to have a screwdriver to remove it, and you have to have a really small screwdriver, which it doesn't come with. But once you get used to it, it's not too bad. One cool thing about this remote is you can actually, uh, you can actually bind this to a Hubson X4, which is a bigger remote. I don't have one here. But if you don't like the tiny size, the Hubson S4 is a good alternative. You can buy them online for about 20 bucks. And uh, the Hubson S4 allows you to do some additional trim and turn the LEDs on and off. So, and it also will give you a high and low rate. So if you want to do flips and such, you can't do it with this, but you can with the Hubson S4. I think if you buy the Estes Dart, which is a bigger version of this um, made by Estes, it, its remote, which is bigger, will also work with this. Um, just like the Hubson S4. So something to consider if you don't like this remote. But I like the portability of this remote. I carry it with me almost everywhere. A couple more features about the remote. It does have left, right, and front, back trim. It does not have a yaw trim, and it does not have a throttle trim. But it's, um, you know, it's pretty good for the size. Um, the rechargeable battery in this takes about 25 minutes to charge, 20, 25 minutes. And it gives you about uh, three, four, five minutes of flying time, depending how how um, hard you're flying the thing, how much you're dropping it and raising it and doing tricks and such. So pretty quick charge time. It also is kind of cool because it charges via USB. So anything, you know, whether you have a wall plug with USB for your phone or whatever, or you can plug it straight into a computer. And then this, the end of this just pops right in here. You want to make sure you get it right. There's only one way it will go, but you could force it and probably break it. Once you pop it in, this has a red LED, and that red LED will light up, indicating that it's charging, and then it'll go out once it's charged. It takes about 20, 30 minutes for it to charge. So one thing about the casing on this, uh, it does come in this box. It's a little better than a blister pack, but it's still not the best reusable box. Once you pull it out of here, this case is pretty much useless. So what I've done as a way to kind of travel around, I just got this... It's actually a pencil case that I got at, I think, uh, Dollar Store or Big Lots or something for, I don't know, $2.99. And I got a little piece of foam, and I cut out a notch for it. And if you line up the props, you can drop that right in there into the foam and put this right in here. And then the remote sits right there. And then you can also put the cable and the instructions in there as well, and it zips right up. And it's really nice because then you can carry this pretty much anywhere. People think it's pencils, right? And then anytime you want to geek out, you pull it out and fly it around a conference room or fly it around your office or your friend's house or whatever. So 
I really recommend getting something to carry it in because because it's so small, you really can have a lot of fun by having access to it all the time. So uh, I'm going to give you a little flight demo here and let you see the LEDs. Uh, one good practice for any quad that I've learned, I could be wrong, but is you want to always have your remote on before you turn the quad on or put the battery in. And you also want to leave your remote on until you turn the quad off. Um, for bigger ones, this is important because if you turn the remote off and it loses signal, sometimes they will try to take off, like the DJI Phantom will try to take off and land itself um, because it thinks it's lost connection with the remote if it's still going. So, But the, with this one, it's a little less important. But I do have the remote on. You can see by the blinking light, it's not bound to anything. Can you see it? And so I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. I'm gonna, can you see that? I'm going to flip the switch, set it down. You want to set it down... Um, pretty much immediately so that the gyros can set. If you turn it on and hold it sideways, you're going to tell the gyros that sideways is straight, flat, and it's going to fly really wonky. So as soon as you turn it on, set it down. So I've got it sitting here. I'm going to show you one other little trick that I learned um, online. If you pull the stick down and to the right, and then you do the direction, this is the throttle and yaw stick, and then if you do the direction stick, right, left, right, left, right, left, a bunch of times, you see how those lights blink? That supposedly, I've been told, resets the gyros. So if the gyros were off, now that it's sitting flat, they are correct. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a little throttle. And as you can see, it's pretty stable. It's uh, probably not trimmed out exactly right, but it's uh, fairly stable. I can kind of hover it right here. Sounds like a bunch of angry bees, which is interesting. And it really, uh, as I said, it's, okay, so let me see if I can trim it a little bit. I'm gonna trim it right, and I'm gonna trim it back. Whoa, and as, as I said before, you see how I just kind of gave it, whoa, hey. <coughs> um, pretty durable. Um, see how I give it a little bit, I'll, I'll go ahead and kill the, kill the throttle for a second and then I'll recover and you can see how it stays pretty stable and it recovers pretty quickly which is nice um, the LEDs give you blue in the front and red in the back so you can kind of see which direction it's facing the yaw response is pretty good as you can see it I'm trying not to hit the lights <laughs> And uh, like I said, it's probably a little advanced for a kid if it's their first one. Um, I'd recommend uh, probably the Blade Nano QX before I'd recommend this to learn on. But as far as, um, you know, advanced beginner and for goofing around indoors and portability, being able to take it places and fly in tight spaces, I really like it. It's just a ton of fun. I do a lot of traveling for work. And so... I've taken it to some ballrooms, uh, event spaces, and big hotels with lots and lots of high ceilings and room, and it's just a blast to fly in there. Does that stay in the shot? I'm, I'm pretty tired on it. I'm going to bring it in here and land it. Um, two other things I have noticed about it, like I said, the props, um, you want to hold on to them because they tend to prop, pop off. And also, I have seen where the motors have become a little bit um, out of alignment with the gears. So if that happens, you can see it and you can just press them back into place and they, they seem to go back in. It is $39.99 at your hobby shop. And it's funny because usually hobby shops I think are more expensive, but in this case, that's the cheapest I've ever found it. When I've seen it online on eBay or Amazon, it's been more expensive. And I think it's because they might still be hard to find. I don't know, but you shouldn't pay more than 40 bucks for it. So that's the Proto X by Estes. Um, great little machine for goofing around, flying indoors, uh, having fun with your friends. Like I said, probably not a beginner quad, but not far from it. It's probably an advanced beginner. Um, pretty well made. I've really enjoyed mine, and for 40 bucks, you really can't go wrong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.